Hi everyone, welcome to Channel Logics. Hope all you guys are preparing well and staying safe at your home. Since we have started our online classes in this one year span of time, we have trained several thousands of students preparing for various competitive exams. If you want to meet our expert faculty team, you can meet our expert faculty team and we are going to come across with best and unique content which will help you to crack your examinations in a smart way. We are going to teach each and every subject very clearly in detail. And we are going to come across with best and smart approaches which will help you to crack your examinations in very short span of time. Our expert faculty team is going to teach you each and every subject very clearly in detail. If you want, you can join our free foundation batch. This free foundation batch, you need not pay any money for this. And in this free foundation batch, you can meet our expert faculty team who are going to teach each and every subject very clearly in detail. If you have any doubts, you can contact us through these numbers. And we welcome you to be part of Chandan Logics. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back to Chandan Logics. Today we'll be discussing 12th December current affairs. I will be going to do the descriptive session. At the end of our session, we'll be going to do the practice questions. So whatever the concepts we have discussed in our today's session, so based on those, the format questions will be given for you in the type of practice questions. So try to answer those questions and even regarding the descriptive part. So we'll be discussing some of the questions which were based beyond the concept. If you want to gain like uh, the other concepts which were related for the descriptive part. So even I will be giving the questions, try to answer for those questions too. And now, before going to start our session, if you want to download the PDFs of current affairs or else some of the static GK regarding the information, you can join through our telegram channel, link will be provided in the description. And apart from this, if you want to watch Telugu current affairs, go through Chandan Logic's Telugu YouTube channel. The channel will be uploading the daily current affairs which was in Telugu language because many of you have mentioned in comment section so regarding the information. And now let us start our session with the descriptive part. So the first concept we'll be discussing under the state news. And here, whenever you will be coming across a state news, you have to follow the formula regarding C square G if you want to know the static GK. Because capital, chief minister and governor. As I said you in the previous session, while we are covering the current affairs which were regarding the national news and as well as the state news. If you are going through any of the some of the other countries other than India, then you have to concentrate and you have to follow the formula regarding C cube, capital, currency and as well as major of the areas you have to do regarding static GK because parallelly you have to cover the static GK and as well as the dynamic GK. So in our sessions, we will be doing both the parts. So try to concentrate and make the notes regarding static GK so that it will be helpful for your further preparation. So now if you look into the question and the regarding the descriptive session, the first concept which is regarding Hyderpur wetland which is in the state of Uttar Pradesh. So this is recognized as a Ramsar site. And now we will be discussing what is the number of Ramsar site particularly in Uttar Pradesh and as well as event regarding the India that means till now actually how many Ramsar sites were present and here you have to know as I have discussed in our previous session about 1971 Ramsar convention on wetlands. So if you know this concept clearly then that so that again whenever you will be coming across the Ramsar sites or wetlands then you can cover the concept which is regarding the 1971 convention of that is on the wetlands and here Hyderpuri wetland which is updating the Madhya Ganga barrage so try to concentrate on the river name which is known as river Ganga and also about 10 kilometers from Bijnur in western Uttar Pradesh so try to concentrate on the state called Uttar Pradesh and even in this map you can look into the location and actually where the Hyderpur wetland is located in the state of Uttar Pradesh is it clear? So that while you are covering across the wetlands or else you can see regarding the Ramsar sites, you have to know the location in which state or city or else the country where it is actually presented. So that you can answer easily whenever sometimes if there is a question regarding geographical location. And now you can see actually till now in Uttar Pradesh there will be like there are total 8 number of Ramsar sites. And Damsar wetlands. Now along with this Hyderpur wetland the number has been increased to 9. 
so total now in uttar pradesh there are total number of ramsar wetlands were 9 so try to concentrate on the numerical term because if there is a question like in uttar pradesh how many number of ramsar wetlands were present then your answer should be 9 so along with haidarpur wetland here the total number of ramsar wetlands were 9 is it clear and also this wetland has been identified under which of the river and the mission name that is namami ganga is the mission name so under this concept and according to 1971 convention of ramsar convention wetlands so recently haidarpur wetland was approved in the state of uttar pradesh and recognized as a ramsar site so once you go through the concept called Ramsar site that means for which of the following sites Ramsar site that means under this convention they will be recognized what are the qualities and the features it has to maintain is it clear so once through go through the concept called Ramsar site so under what conditions and what are, on which basis actually the particular location will be considered as a Ramsar site and here this is a central flagship called Namami Gange and also a model wetland along the Ganga. So with this, now in India particularly, you can see this is regarding in the state of Uttar Pradesh and if you move to India, the total of 47 such designated areas in the country. How many designated areas under the Ramsar sites? Till now along with this Hyderpur that is wetland, so there are 47 such designated areas in the country called India. So this is all about Hyderpur wetland and which is in state of Uttar Pradesh. Now it is home for total number of Ramsar wetlands were 9. Is it clear with the concept? And next if we will be moving to the summits and conferences. So here Prime Minister Modi participated in the summit for democracy. So here you can see summit for democracy as we have said. But here whenever the leaders will be giving an oath they have to follow. So here when actually the Joe Biden US regarding US actually when he has elected so he has made that an announcement to conduct the summit for democracy. So now in 2021 recently the person has been hosted regarding the summit for democracy and here total number of how many countries were participated and which were excluded also now will be discussing and what is the objective to discuss about this to conduct the event called summit for con conference and here us president joe biden is hosting the first of two summits for the democracy and actually which took place virtually on december 9th and 10th and even actually here you have to concentrate who has actually hosted the summit and also regarding India, the person who has actually attended that meeting, right? So here Prime Minister Modi has been attended the meeting on December 9th and 10th virtually and addresses this democratic that is the summit for democracy and here Prime Minister Modi from India has been given a statement which is regarding democratic spirit and also the pluralistic ethos which are ingrained in Indians. So this is the con that, that means the title and the statement which was given by Prime Minister Modi from India. That means here many number of countries were participated in a particular summit called Summit for Democracy. Then here if you move to the part nearly one you can see 100 or else you can see either nearly around 110 nations were present when which were participated in the summit for democracy is it clear so here don't get confused so here the number is between 100 to 110 nations were presented during the summit and even what are the other countries actually which were not included what is the reason is it clear that means what are the other countries many nearly 110 countries have took part in this summit for democracies even here India is also a part and it took part in the summit for democracy and as well as like what the some of the statements which were given democratic spirit then the other countries which were not took part and invited for this summit is that the two countries were China and Russia even Ukraine and Taiwan were also invited to the summit but Russia and China were not included and invited for the particular summit because the reason here both these countries realized a joint statement in which they said that US is displaying a cold war mentality and even that will stoke up the ideological confrontation and rift in the world so even like you can see Russia and China like they'll be focusing and they'll be like some of the disputes between US that means they'll be saying like US government is following some of the other like democratic policies so here now we were like stable that means Russia and China 
so here now for this particular summit russia and china were not invited and not attended so this is the concept regarding summit for democracy here you have to focus what are the countries which have not took part in this and as well as regarding india who is the person has attended the meeting and attended the summit what are the statements given by the person so that means regarding india you have to concentrate and the countries which were not participated what is the reason is it clear so these are the areas you have to do regarding summit for democracy which was hosted by us president joe biden next we'll be moving to ranks and reports so here recently fortune india's most powerful women india 2021 announced so particularly these were the reports which were based on the most powerful women which is released by fortune india's and also here you have to concentrate who are the top 5% name list and as well as like their portfolios in which areas they'll be working and what is their like contribution and also why the persons has been selected is it clear so maximum you have to consider the top 5 names because if there is a chance like consider for example like it will be giving who among the following is not in the list of top 5 most powerful women according to the fortune indias so that if you have known top 5 women so that you can eliminate those options whatever the remaining option will be there you can opt the answer right so in this way it may be if it is in the question is in indirect manner also you can answer to the question is it clear so here actually recently fortune india released the list of most powerful women in india that is regard 2021 and in this the top most powerful woman is that union minister ministry of finance and ministry of corporate affairs you can see here nirmala sitharaman ranked first as we have well known as a ministry of finance and as well as next the second rank was given by for the reliance foundation chairperson and goodwill ambassador neetha ambani in second position and the third position moves to samya swaminathan who is a chief scientist at who stands at third position that is world health organization who stands for and try to cover the concept which is related for the world health organization that means the static gk you have to concentrate established year and as well as the headquarters because this concept we have discussed in our sessions many times regarding who even while we are covering some of the covid current affairs also so try to concentrate on who and if it is possible try to mention in comment section and also try to know about the functions and objectives of world health organization is it clear now if you want a list of the top 5 person names and also their portfolios and even their rankings so try to pause at this slide and take the notes So the first person is Nirmala Sita Raman, Neetha Ambani, Brand Ambani, and also you can see Soumya Swaminathan, and even Kiran Mazumdar Shah. And fifth position stands at Suchitra Ella. So try to make down the notes regarding the ranks, and that means their positions, names, and also the you can see here their portfolio. So try to take the notes, pause the video, then you have to take the notes because only in the first session, the first slide, we have discussed top three positions. Even the other two names were also included in this. Next, we'll be moving to business concept. So here, the two actually in companies were in included in this: Airtel and Invest India. So these are the two companies and the institutes or entities which have come up with the program and the initiative called Startup Innovation Challenge. Now we'll be discussing what is the objective to come up with this Startup Innovation Ch Challenge. That means what are the benefits by conducting this program? And this initiative was brought up by Bharati Airtel and also the Invest India. So try to remember the co company's name. And also here the National Investment Promotion and Facilitation Agency. so here along with bharati airtel and invest india what is the other agency taking part in this program that is national investment promotion and facilitation agency so these three were actually included in the particular program called that is startup innovation challenge so here this is airtel india startup innovation challenge this is particularly for the startups is it clear this is for whom the category called startups and here the objective is to develop the solutions in 5g and iot the iot that means as we have no internet of things is it clear so in these two areas to support the startups so the program and the initiative was brought up by airtel invest india and national investment promotion facilitation agency 
and also in this concept try to know here it is a, for the first time we are listening this word called national investment promotion facilitation agency try to mention in comment section some of the few points and the information which is related for the particular organization and also here under this challenge even the early stage technology companies are also being invited that means along with bharati airtel and invest india and the national investment promotion other even the uh, you can see here early stage technology companies were also being included and also to the objective that so the even they were inviting the other technology companies what is the objective the objective is that to demonstrate the differentiate solutions and also in the areas that means to provide the solutions in what are the areas the areas like 5g cloud computing iot internet of things and as well as the digital entertainment so once after the session you go through the concept what are the benefits and the advantage advantages comparing for the 5g regarding like 4g is it clear compare the difference between 4g and 5g then you'll coming to know the advantages what does the cloud computing means what does actually the internet of thing means is it clear and also the digital entertainment so if you know the basic terminologies so that you can answer for the upcoming questions because sometimes there will, may be a chance in the question see which of the following statement is current regarding 5g if you know the features of 5g then you can answer the question like which of the following statement is true or else which of the following statement is false regarding 5g so that if you have an idea regarding these basic terminologies they can you can answer for those type of questions right so once after the session you have to go through the concept and here the company includes which is regarding bharati airtel which is established in the year 1995 and the headquarters is at new delhi india then you can move to the concept ministry of electronics and information technology recently organized a digital payment utsav so now we'll be discussing under which of the following celebrations actually this what is that digital payment utsav has been celebrated and also what are the objectives to celebrate a particular program and the initiative is it clear so this was brought up by which ministry ministry of electronics and information technology so try to concentrate on the ministries because not only the ministries but when you'll be coming such initiatives and the scheme which ministry has take took a part or else which organization has organized a particular event or conducted an event is it clear so here which is taking part is the ministry of information electronics and information technology and also this is hosted a unique event called digital payment utsav so here the concept of it, this is an awareness campaign which is known as digital payment sandesh yatra along with the digital payment anthem you have to see the digital payment anthem while they'll be considering the particular utsav which is known as chutki bachke that means cashless touchless and paperless digital payment what it means actually majorly during the time of covid and also you have to concentrate like not only about the payment sector but also everything is becoming like the step towards a digitalization even here this is regarding the payment system that is digital payment uh, utsav and this payment system you have to concentrate paperless touchless and also the cashless these are the three anthems which were followed and the, this statement you have to remember what is the statement chutki bache ke is it clear so this statement you have to know because if they'll be asking like regarding the digital payment utsav which was launched by ministry of electronics and information technology which of the following anthem they have been followed the anthem is that cashless touchless and paperless and also during this particular event along with this ministry the other were you can see even top banks fintechs were also awarded and recognized across the several categories because during the financial year they will be focusing about the achievements the financial years represents 2019-20 and 2020-21 so and also because here why they'll be actually awarded the particular prizes and achievements for the top banks and fintechs because here their contribution is towards the digital payment system so that they have recognized under the program and celebrated that is known as digital payment utsav next we'll be moving to important days so here international mountain day which is observed on 11th of december when actually it was observed on 11th december now we'll be discussing what is the theme and also what is the objective for conducting this international mountain day so here 
This is celebrated to create the awareness about importance of mountains to the life and also to highlight the importance of mountains for the communities and the society. Even the constraints, mountain development and to build through alliances and also which is highlighting the opportunities and which is bringing the positive. Because here the positive change is all about to mountain and to maintain to mountain the peoples and environments around the world. So try to concentrate on the geography concept here. Actually, what does the term? I try to know the difference between the hills and the mountains. If possible, mention in comment section the difference between hills and mountain. At least the basic definition first you have to know about the mountain and the hills. So that you will come to know the difference between these two. Basically, this is your next question regarding descriptive part. Because along with the current affairs, you can cover even the geography. That means other subject you can interlink here. So try to follow this procedure. If you want to cover many of the subjects along with current affairs, is it clear? Because here you have to know the basic. This is the basic terminology: hills and the mountains. Then you can move the theme of 2021 International Mountain Day, celebrated on 11th December. They have considered is that sustainable mountain tourism. What is the concept based on the tourism? And also here, actually, how the tourism sector plays an important role. Even tourism sector plays for the country's improvement of economy, and also for the increase in the economy of a state or particular districts. You can see, is it clear? And also here, if the economy of state improves, then the economy of a country obviously it will be improved. So this is the relation between the tourism sector and the economy of a country. And here. Why actually they have considered the theme called sustainable mountain tourism? Because even they can contribute to the creating additional and alternative livelihood options, and also promoting the opportunities which are relating relating to the poverty alleviation, and as well as landscape, even including the biodiversity conservation. So once you mention in comment section, what does actually the the, the words and terminology represents? Biodiversity conservation is it clear? What is the concept? Biodiversity conservation. Then you can move to the part, the history. That means from which year actually has started to celebrate? What is the organization took part to celebrate an important day? That is United Nations General Assembly, one of the six principle of United Nations. So first it has established the day was started to celebrate in the year two thousand three. The that is the objective to encourage and sustainable development of the mountains. And also, UN has declared 2002 as a United Nations International Year of Mountains. So try to know here. This is a new concept for you. These many days we have come across the international like weeks, important weeks or days. But here even International Year of Mountains, United Nations International Year of Mountains, which of the following is known as? Is it the answer should be 2002 is known as United Nations International Year of Mountains. So with this we have done with our descriptive part. Whatever the concepts we have discussed today, based on those here the questions will be discussed now. Just if you want to answer the questions because just now we have discussed those, so try to answer the questions. Here, which river base is associated with the Hardi Pur and that is a wetland, which is recognized as a Ramsar site in which of the following state? Is it clear? So either the question may be in this format. That means based on the river base it, or else. Hyderabad wetland in which that situated in which of the following state and as well as recently it has recognized as a which of the following number that means numerical term as a Ramsar site in particular state is it clear? Actually, Hyderabad wetland is in the state of Uttar Pradesh. And now you can see regarding a river basin, Brahmaputra, Indus, Godavari, Mahanadi, or else Ganga. Who among the following has ranked the first in Fortune India's list as the most powerful woman? Just now we have discussed about the Fortune India's list, which is according to the portfolios and their ranks, and as well as the name of a person. Even we have discussed about the uh, the top five women who were stand under this Fortune India's list. And here, if you can move about the top one, right? So if you can look into the options, Nirmala Sitaraman, Nithya Ambani. Soumya Swaminathan, Kiran Mazumdar Shah, because here all these names were actually these were the persons who have stood in this top five. But to like keep your mind in confused state, the person specifically asking the certain rank, either the first position or else sometimes the question may be on the second position. 
so try to concentrate even on the ranks of a person and as well as the names sometimes the portfolios also they'll be asking so try to cons on their office or is the portfolio what they were holding presently next the theme of this year's international mountain day is mountains matter for youth mountain biodiversity mountains matter or else sustainable mountain tourism so with this we have done with our sessions either the practice questions or descriptive part try to answer for the following questions as i have discussed in our descriptive part also so you have to answer like at least if you were like more concerned on descriptive part so but you have to maintain consistency if you were answering for descriptive questions it is not an issue you have to answer but maintain consistency while you are answering if you are following like the practice questions try to mention your answers but maintain regularly and also whatever the terms and as with the terminology we will be using in the sessions so try to make a note that is also what are the points will be highlighted in the class so try to make it as a running notes if it is possible but also if you are having like if you are not having a notes of regarding current affairs even we will be providing a soft copies you can get it through a telegram channel also as we have discussed right so thank you everyone we will be meeting in our next session until then stay tuned and also stay safe stay home follow all the safety protocols and the precautions regarding omicron virus